Welcome to lecture number 8 on the visualization of graphs. Today we want to talk about contact representations of planar graphs, in particular triangle contacts and rectangular duals. I first want to define what an intersection representation is. If we have a graph and we represent every vertex as a set of points in the plane, then we can have it such that two sets intersect if and only if the corresponding vertices are adjacent. So here we have an underlying graph, for every vertex we have a set, and we can see for example the purple and the orange set intersect and there is an edge between them. On the other hand, the blue and the red do not intersect, so this is not a correct representation, but we can extend it a bit. Also, we can see that the red and the orange do intersect, but there is no edge between them, so we are not allowed to have this intersection and have to remove it. And if we also make sure that we have these edges here, then we get a representation like that. So from a graph, we can get an intersection representation like this. But we can also go the other way. Let's say we have a collection of sets, then we can read off the intersection graph from those sets. And the intersection graph has its vertex set exactly the sets, and as an edge if and only if, the two sets intersect. A special case of intersection representations are contact representations. So let's say we have given a graph, and we represent every vertex again by a geometric object. Now the difference to intersection representations is that here we only allow them to touch. So in a contact representation, the sets corresponding to two vertices touch if and only if we have the edge. So this here would be a contact representation. This is also an intersection representation, but not every intersection representation is a contact representation, because here the interiors must be completely disjoint. We can restrict it to a set of allowed geometric objects, and then we have a special contact representation that depends on the type of objects that we allow. For example, we can allow all disks in the plane, or all polygons, or we can even go to 3D and allow all rectangular cuboids. It is quite easy to see that we can get a contact representation for all planar graphs. For example, we can just take the first half of every edge, and the union of those gives us a set, and then they touch if and only if we have an edge here. But there's a very old result from 1936 by Köber, who showed that you can even do every planar graph as a contact representation of disks. And from disks it follows almost immediately that you can also do it with polygons, because we can approximate those disks and make sure that we still have those touching points, and then we get a representation like this. So we have a special case of intersection representations where we have interior disjoint sets, and we can do all planar graphs with disks or with polygons. What about the other direction? Is the intersection graph of a contact representation always planar? What do you think? No, it's not. Not even if all our sets are connected. For example, if we take these polygons here that all touch in a single point in the middle, then this gives us the complete graph K5. And we all know that the K5 is not a planar graph. But some object types can be used to represent special classes of planar graphs. For example, we can represent all bipartite graphs with horizontal and vertical segments, where one bipartition is drawn as horizontal and the other is drawn as vertical. We can do all maximal triangle-free graphs as contact representations of rectangles. And we can do all planar triangulations as contact representations of triangles with a right angle. And these are also the types of contact representations that we want to have a look at in this lecture. So as a general framework, how can we compute a contact representation of a given graph? What we usually do is that we consider only special cases. So for example, inner triangulations or maximally bipartite graphs. So we want to add as many edges as possible such that we have 
some graph class where it's easier to do and then we can just remove things again. The thing is that removing edges is always a problem because if we want to remove an edge, we have to remove a contact between two sets, for example between two rectangles, and that might destroy other properties. So when we triangulate something, we want to make sure that we don't add edges between existing vertices, but we only add vertices and dummy edges to those. For example, if we have a face like this, then we can place a vertex in the middle, connect it to everything, and then we have a triangulation here. In the second step, we want to describe the contact representation combinatorically. So we want to get rid of the geometry and find some properties that we can use and then we only have to combinatorially find something. For example, we can use a Schnuder boot for those triangles, and then those directed edges represent the point to edge contacts. And then if we find a Schnuder boot, then we can find a representation from that. For that, we always have to ask us which objects can contact each other and in which way. For example, here, between triangles, we can have a point-edge contact, or a point-point contact, or an edge-edge contact. Now we want to compute a combinatorical description, as we have found here, and show that this description can be used to construct the drawing. In this lecture, we have a look at two different types of contact representations. First, for right triangles, where we have corner contacts, so all the contacts have one corner and one edge, or two corners. We use a Schnuder realizer to describe those contacts, and then we use a canonical order to calculate the drawing. Then we would have a look at the dissections of a rectangle, which is called a rectangular dual. So basically this is a contact representation of rectangles, where the union again is a rectangle and we don't have any holes. And for that we find a similar description like Schnuder realizer for rectangles, and we construct drawings via ST digraphs, duals, and topological sorting. So we use all kinds of tools that we have already explored in this lecture. In part two, we will have a look at this representation, and in the three other parts, we will have a closer look at those rectangular duals.